We need to know where this story came from. Um, well, um, did you live this? No, I didn't live it. <laughs> People in France thought this happened um, because uh, the film used to start with a dedication, and um, I took that out. And part of the reason was because everybody was w wasn't getting that it was a dedic it was dedicated to the girls in the film, and um, and was sort of a, a little foreshadowing note before the film started. Um, and, it, and it isn't based on a true, you know, it, it didn't happen. Um, you know, it, it comes from a confusing period at the end of high school uh, when, um, when um, you know, 9-11 uh, happened and, uh, and, uh, and at the end of that year, uh, another friend of mine passed away and um, it was confusing, uh, especially to be a teenager and, and to deal with, with those things. And, um, and I guess it, that was the seed of it. And, and uh, over the course of the years, it was an idea that kept sort of developing. And then as, as the culture and the world started to continue to change, um, the idea continued to change. And I, you know, I kept getting further and further away from my teenage years. And, um, and when I was given the chance to write, I was living in France at the residence. And um, there I, I watched a lot of Frederick Wiseman films. And it became very clear that the, the structure of the story would be almost like a documentary in that sense, almost like a Frederick Wiseman film. And, and then the idea of the video came about and the idea that, uh, you know, really struggling with who, who this boy is and, um, you know, because it didn't, it, the video wasn't there in the beginning. The video came about only uh, very late into the process. But once it did, it made a lot of sense. So the story was told without his video portion in yeah, it as you it first began. Yeah, it was, com it was um, you know, there was really no through line. And, uh, and then once the video came in, that's when everything sort of came together. One of the things that I, I have read, um, in press notes about this, um, you mentioned 9-11, and you just mentioned 9-11 now. That is not present, and yet it influenced you in the making of this. Could you talk a little bit about that? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's uh, because, it, because it was for me, to, it was an idea of, of, um, of dealing with issues of guilt, but sort of like an existential idea of guilt. And, um, and culpability. It has such a, a clear and vivid and personal style in how you shot it. I mean, it's very striking that heads are cut off, people are in the side of the frame, adults are in blur very often. It's very rare that you see an adult in any kind of focus. It's really the kids that you're seeing, but the adults are these kind of, you know, kind of ghosts. Could you talk about that aesthetic choice of yours and also possible influences in what made you decide to tell a story in this way? Um, <clears throat> when it came to that kind of stuff, it was just sort of, uh, it was something that we had been, you know, uh, in the past short films playing with, playing a lot with out of focus and people coming in and out of focus. And I like, I like out of focus, I like out of focus shots. And, um, and uh, within, it's always nice when you can find a reason for it to be like that. And the reason in this was, well, we're focusing on the kids and these sort of adults are coming in and out and they're not, the, the connection is sort of ambiguous or, or shaky. And, um, and uh, I mean, it, it also, you know, when you're, when, you're, when you're developing a script and you're developing an idea and you're talking with your, I'm sorry, my cell phone's on. Um, <laughs> I'm not gonna pick we it could up. text while we talk yeah. too. Uh, when you're when you're working with your cinematographer, and when I'm, when I was working with Jody, it was it was a very um, natural progression. It was it was just sort of the way we felt this was going to look, and this world was going to look, and and um, and influences from your own uh, film going, whether it's yeah. Gus Van Sant, we see a little of that. Uh, we see a little yeah, of you know, Michael Sant Haneke thing. in there. Well, the yeah. Michael Haneke is definitely more of a was definitely more of an ins sort of inspiration or influence on me uh, than Gus Van Sant. And in, in some ways, I was trying to avoid 
as much as possible any similarity to elephant because I knew that people were going to make that uh, comparison right away before they even saw the film, you know, just because of what it was. And that, you know, he's done it well, but, you know, it, the influence for me was probably more so on Chantal Ackerman and, a you know, the film that, that influenced him in a lot of ways, which was Jean Dielman. And, and the way that she was approaching um, her subjects in that was very, was very important to me. And, um, you know, the out of focus thing was, is just a, is just, there wasn't, there was any, there wasn't a specific reference. I mean, I can say we did watch films by um, Dumont, uh, we watched films by Haneke, um, Kubrick, um, but the, that aesthetic of it was something that was, just came sort of naturally and, um, you know, also, just the way that we started dealing with actors, and, and it just felt like that. Though I, right. I, I want to open this to questions, but I just want to do one more question, which is about your actors and how you found them and how you worked with them and did they know each other before and how did you get this great sense of as if they were really still in school? Um, well, because we were living in a school. It was kind of... You, you, what you would, what we you were mean? living in that boarding school, so it was kind of hard not to feel like you were in school. During the, during the during shoot, the shoot you were, yeah. which was for how long? For about a month and a half. Mm. Um, well, we had very good casting directors, Susan Shotmaker and Randy Glass, uh, did the casting on this. <laughs> exactly. And, um, and, and they just, they're just in touch with... with um, a, a large pool of very good New York actors. And did they know each other before? Who, the your, your, your cast, your principal. Oh, no, no. Um, well, the funny thing was Jeremy and um, Addison had known each other before, um, and they just saw each other for the first time after about a year um, in, in our uh, chemistry read. And Ezra, um, Ezra just uh, came out of nowhere. And Gary, Gary I had seen... Um, we had, my producers and I went to go see Red Light Winter, and we had seen Gary, and, uh, and that was about a year before, and we all like fell in love with him right away. And also Michael Stuhlbarg, Michael which Stuhlbarg is, is you know fantastic stage actor. Yeah, Michael Stuhlbarg is incredible, wow. and um, you know, and there's so many other actors. I mean, the, you know, the original cut of this film was about four hours, so <laughs> that was very Wiseman. <laughs> yeah, and um, there's so many great actors. Uh, that were in there, and there were scenes that, that, that were eventually, you know, cut out. As What's we were... missing? What, is there something that's missing that you wish were still there? Um, there? There are things that I wish were still there just so people knew of them. I think that what I ended up taking out in the edit was the right choice, but I wish there was this, there was this great scene that Chris McCann did, um, who's an actor that I really love and who I've worked with, and it was a scene after the death where he sort of has a very genuine monologue to the students because one student comes in he hasn't done his work and he's kind of distracted and he kind of leads him into this monologue about where the school is but it was too much of a it was too much of a coda at that point and it was too soon and it just didn't work and, and Rosemary DeWitt who's also in the film and she you know she's in Rachel getting married I mean, she, and she's been in a short, a short films I mean, she's an incredible actress and all you see of her is you know her skirt her butt and her boobs and uh, she, she did an amazing scene with Ezra um, after, after the death as well, where she walks over to Ezra and sits down next to him, sits down next to him and, and, um, and actually and prays with him. And um, it, was, it was from an earlier, part, earlier version of the film where there were certain undertones of uh, religion was sort of touched on. And I decided in the end to take that out. 